Buying a home anywhere can be a stressful and confusing process. This video is intended to be a brief guideline of what it's like to buy a home here, so if you have any specific questions about the home buying process, please feel free to give us a call. We would love to have a chance to work with you. I'm Ryan Ariza with Atmosphere Real Estate Group, and this is how to buy a home in New Mexico. So first things first, when starting your home search, it's super important that you talk to a lender so you can understand your buying power. This would include your target price range, the amount of money you're wanting to spend monthly, and the programs that are available to you. The lender is also going to want some more information from you, like your job history, your credit score, and your debt to income ratio. And basically the debt to income ratio is just them asking you what's your income and how much money are you spending per month on your expenses or any liabilities you might have. There are several different loan types, ranging from FHA, conventional, and VA, just to name a few. Down payment assistance programs are also available, and these programs have helped so many people achieve their goal of being a homeowner. If you're curious to learn more about the different loan types or the programs available to you, we left a link down below with tried and true lenders that we've done a lot of business with. It's super important that you know you can work with whoever you'd like, whether they're a national lender or a local lender here in New Mexico. It's definitely your choice on who you work with, although we definitely recommend at least talking to a local lender when you start your home search here. Once you've talked to a lender and you've got them all the information they've requested, you'll receive something called a pre-qualification letter. Now that you have that pre-qual letter, it's time to find a real estate agent. The cool thing about working with a real estate agent here in New Mexico, especially if you're a home buyer, is essentially you're having an agent work for you for free. And that is because most times, it's not always, but most times a seller is already agreed to pay a buyer's broker's commission. Whoever buys that house, the agent who's representing the buyer will receive their commission from the seller. So you as a buyer, you really don't have to worry about any costs when it comes to commission. However, you will have to cover your own inspection, your appraisal, and some other things that we'll get into here in a sec. If you don't have an agent and you're thinking about buying in New Mexico, please feel free to give us a call. We service the whole state, so we'd love to have a chance to work with you. So now that you've picked your real estate broker, it's really time to start your home search. Your broker should be asking you a ton of questions, like how big of a home do you want? How many bedrooms do you need? What's important to you? What area of town do you really want to be in? All of those things go into helping your agent determine what homes are best for you and how they can better service you. Now that you have your broker and you're starting to look at homes and you find a home that you really like, it's time to put an offer in. You'll sit down with your agent, you'll come to an agreement on what you guys are gonna offer in terms of price, and there's a whole lot of other terms that can also be included, like the closing date, like what personal property you want to convey. Do you want the fridge to stay? Do you want the washer dryer to stay? All of those little things will also go into your offer. After the offer is submitted to the listing agent, one of three things can happen. They can either, one, accept your offer, which is amazing, because now you're under contract, or they can, two, counter your offer. So if there's any terms within your purchase agreement that the seller did not agree with, they can counter back, changing those terms. And the third option, it is sad, but you'll get rejected, and that's okay. We can move on, we'll find you a new property, or I've done in the past, I've had buyers submit offers, they get rejected, and we come right back and submit another offer with a little bit better price or different terms that are more appealing to the seller, and we ended up getting the deal. When your offer does get accepted, congratulations, you are now under contract. You haven't closed yet, but you're sure a lot closer than you were the day before, and now it's time to get your home inspection scheduled, it's time to get earnest money delivered to the title company, and it's time to deliver the pre-qual letter that you received from the lender over to the listing agent. When it comes to earnest money, you can look at earnest money like a good faith deposit. It is deposited into an escrow account at the title company, but there are several ways to get your earnest money back should you ever come to a termination agreement with the seller. For instance, if you get an inspection report back, you're very dissatisfied with the report, you can definitely terminate that agreement, no questions asked, and get your earnest money back. Also throughout this time frame, we're usually expecting a packet from the seller, typically called a property disclosure packet. In that packet, the seller has a duty to disclose all material defects. So if they had any past leaks, or if they had any water damage, mold, or the roof fell down last year, they do have a duty to disclose that information to you as a buyer. You'll also be getting CCNRs, and CCNRs don't go for every neighborhood, but most neighborhoods do have them, and basically what those are is just telling you what you can and cannot do with the property. If you want to paint your house green, you better check your covenants and restrictions because they may be coming on your door and saying, you cannot paint this house green. That's just an example of some of the things you can and can't do. So now that you've gotten your earnest money submitted, you've got your pre-qual letter sent over to the seller, it's now time to focus on the inspection. I definitely recommend that you do your due diligence when it comes to hiring a home inspector. And what that means is go online, check the reviews, make sure that you trust they're gonna do a good job for you, 
do a good home inspection to make sure your home lives up to the standards that you want. And that doesn't mean that the home needs to be perfect. You know, homes, are like anything, age, they wear, they tear, and they have some damage. But as long as those major systems are intact, the roof is in good shape, the AC, the water heater, the electricity, the plumbing, the foundation, all of those major items definitely are things you're going to want to focus on and try not to focus so much on cosmetic things, scuffs on the walls, anything like that. And like I said earlier, there's a lot of ways to get out of the contract and get your earnest money back and typically the inspection is the fastest way to do it because if there's any items that you're dissatisfied with, you can terminate right away and let the seller know with no questions asked. So now that you've had the home inspection done and you got your report back, it's now time to sit down with your broker and determine whether or not you're gonna want repairs done. If you do want repairs done, you'll put it on something called an objection, resolution, and waivers form. What that form is, is pretty much signaling out the exact items you are dissatisfied with and what remedy you're wanting from the seller to ensure that you're comfortable moving forward. Again, this is another negotiation process and that means you may not come to an agreement with the seller. And if you do not come to an agreement with the seller, you will terminate and get your earnest money back. Now that you're past the inspection period, it's now time to focus on the appraisal. What the appraisal is, is basically the bank hiring an appraiser to go out to the home to determine the value. And by this point, you're already agreed to a certain purchase price. You may be over what it was listed at, you may be under what it was listed at, but essentially the bank is gonna go out there and make sure that you're buying a house that is worth what you're paying. And if it's not worth it, you're gonna have a problem. No, but seriously, if it's not worth it, it is another negotiation process. And that means one of three things can happen. Either you're gonna get the seller to drop the price to the appraised value, or you're gonna pay the difference between the appraised value. So if you're under contract at 200,000, it appraises at 195,000, you have a $5,000 difference. And that means if the seller does not wanna drop the price, but you still wanna buy the house, well, you have to bring an additional $5,000 to the closing table. The third option is you cannot reach an agreement with the seller and you will terminate and move on. You'll still get your earnest money back, but you will terminate and you'll move on and find another property. Now that we're at the final stretch, a couple days before closing, we will do something called the final walkthrough. And if you did get some repairs done or you asked the seller to do stuff and they agreed to it, this is a great time to make sure that those repairs are done. I also recommend to my buyers that they get the home inspector out again. And yes, sometimes they do charge you another fee. Sometimes it's $150, sometimes it's a little more, but it's really good just to have someone who knows how to operate those systems and make sure that it was done correctly. So now that you've gotten through the final walkthrough, you have your clear to close, you have the cash to close, so you know exactly the amount of money you need to bring to the closing table, it's now time to go to closing. And typically when you go to closing, you'll be expected to have two forms of ID, which is typically your driver's license, it could be a debit card, credit card, any form of ID. It's also good to notify the title company exactly how you are going to pay for it. You could do a cashier's check or you can have the money wired directly from your bank account to the title company. After you sign, it typically takes anywhere from two to four hours for it to fully fund and record at the county. And that's why it's a great time to go over to the city or go wherever you need to to get your utility switched over to your name. By the time you get all that done, the key should be ready. You should be fully funded and recorded. Congratulations, you are now a homeowner. I hope you found this video helpful and insightful. Of course, I couldn't go over every little detail in the purchase agreement. So again, if you guys have any specific questions, definitely do not hesitate to give me a call or give any one of our team members a call. You guys can also feel free to check out our website. We have a ton of great information and resources available to you from lenders and vendors and information about New Mexico. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. We sell real estate all over New Mexico, and we would love to have the chance to help you, your friends, or your family. Thank you, guys. I'll see you next time.